like they say, you should be prepared for, you know, any opportunities. So that is the first step that you've, you're doing for yourself. So I congratulate all of you. And like uh, Mr. Paul has just said, this is just the starting point. So um, you have to push yourself. You've done the first step. You have to continue to push yourselves and know that this is just the beginning of great things to come. You're also very lucky to be associated with the British Council. Um, I was an alumni of one of the boot camps years ago, I think about eight years ago. I can't believe that, eight years ago. And um, two or three weeks ago, Mr. Paul called me up and he wanted me to speak. I had a good laugh about that anyways because <laughs> I'm supposed to be speaking as a successful entrepreneur. I mean, as a, a successful fashion entrepreneur. But, um, as they say, success is relative. But then, yes, I will tell you all that um, I consider myself successful in this business. And I hope that your dreams all come true. So uh, this morning, I'm talking about how to be successful in the fashion industry in Nigeria. The very first thing is that you have to know your craft. Not necessarily as a professional. If you intend to go the business angle, you have to know your craft. And what I mean by this is that you have to research very deeply. Um, we're so lucky in this age now. We have so many resources. We have people that we can look up to. People are talking about it. So it's no more a case of you're going the, all the way by yourself. There's so many people who can hold your hands, you know, on your way up. So first thing is to know your craft. And, oh, oh that was me. So in fashion, as we know, fashion is very transient. What I mean by this is that trends come and go. This minute, we're all wearing red. By tomorrow, we're wearing yellow, and that's how it is. And I know that as creatives, we can be very passionate about these things that you create. But at the same time, we have to be in the real world. So now, for you to be able to merge these things, you have to um, research and follow what exactly is happening at whatever particular time that you are in. And um, for you to be able to do this, you have to plug into what is the industry know at the time. This way, it helps you to be able to stable your creative, um, what's the word now? Your creative um, buzz. Like, ah, I know this is going to be the thing now. Yellow is the thing now. And you jump on yellow. But you cannot jump on yellow for long. You have to find a middle ground in between that next big thing that you have created and what people actually want. So that is, um, that is the first angle for me. Uh, the second thing is that do not have expectations. Rather, have requirements. What I mean by this is that I know that um, a lot of us as creatives, we would say you have your family and your friends. Those are your first people to go to. No. Um, I'm sorry that um, I'm busting some bubbles right now. But the truth about the matter is that your family and your friends are not your first go-to as creatives. Create because you know your why. Right? And after then, you now begin to think about the business end of things. If you... If you if you put yourself together in a way that people want to associate with you, then they certainly will. But honestly, family and friends don't want to, they don't want to break the relationship that you have already. So when they run away from you because you're still doing your trial and errors, you should give them a slack because personally, you yourself would not want to be the test, ra the test rabbits, right? So this is how it works. You have to create yourself. You have to know your craft before your family and your friends buy into you. And um, that is, as, is as, as it is with any form of um, you know, uh, creative um, space that you are in. Um, 
choosing, choosing um, business over hobbies, right? So now, as creatives, you have passion for whatever, you have passion for whatever um, ends that you, 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 are, you find yourself in. But at the same time, if you want to grow as a business, you have to turn these hobbies into businesses. What I mean by this is that you have to put in structure. I know we hear these things a lot, structure. It's so easy to say, but it's, it's, so, it's equally very easy to do. Um, imagine that this particular spot is known to sell, let's say, water. And this is your route every day. You have it in your head that I'm going to buy water at that spot when I get there. Now, you have created a business that sells water. It's so, so well packaged. It's hygienic. And people start to come. They come on Monday, they find you there. They come on Tuesday, you're not there. On Wednesday, you're not there. On Friday, oh, I had this, I had that, you're there. So imagine that people begin to think, I don't want to go there today, and this person is not there. So you have to find a way around it. I know that being in business is hard. Um, I can't even lie to you. I've been running my business for the last seven years. And if you do not have external help, it is hard. It, fashion, for one, is, made, is supposed to be glamorous. I'm not going to lie to you. But there is nothing glamorous behind the, behind, the, behind the scenes. It is not glamorous at all. It's a lot of hard work. So you have to find a way to create you know, a structure in such a way that you are there, you're consistent, you show up. No excuses. Today will be good. Tomorrow might be not so good. And tomorrow might be really, really good. But you have to keep at it. So these are you know, some of the ways to, t to think about turning your hobby into a business. Now, um, I'm going to talk about branding. I'm not a branding expert, but I'm going to give you a little backstory into my business. My business is actually called Unknown, Unknown Clothing. So um, when I started, I wanted to find a base point for women. I know that we love fashion. Nigerian women love fashion. We love to look good. And we're going to jump on whatever next trend that is available or whatever next tailor is you know, doing well and all of that. So, but I know also that we love quality. It is very, very important to us that we look good. So I started Unknown. Now, the reason, the, the reason for the name Unknown, I know it's, it's funny because I've had a lot of positives and negative feedback about the name. But I wanted women to feel very confident in themselves. It doesn't have to be a branded outfit. It doesn't have to be a known name per se. But it should be about the feet, basically. So when I started Unknown, I was fresh out of work. And, and, and I will tell you all, I'm actually a lawyer. So I'd worked for 12 years. And um, I wanted to start Unknown, right? And I wanted to test if people actually would buy quality over names. So I went in anonymously. My family and my friends did not know me. And I did not come out to be known or known until three years when I had to be at um, the British Council um, event where I met Mr. Paul, right? So I started, I, I started by um, going to my tailors. I, I've always been in fashion. I've always loved fashion and fashion um, business and fashion anyways. If, so I would go to my individual tailors and give them, you know, pieces of fabric that I bought in the market. I know this person is good in making shirts, so I'll have him make shirts for me. I know this person is good in making pants. I'll have this person make pants for me. You know, and I was going around like that, and I started I opened up a, an Instagram page and I started selling these pieces. And I found out that significant people in Abuja, I'm talking about like high-flying women, would buy from me. They didn't know me, 
they didn't know who it was, but they could see those things. But at some point, when it started to grow, I realized that I needed to assemble these tailors under one roof and brand the, 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 the clothing line in such a way that when you see our things, you would know that it's from unknown because everybody has their own technique, different techniques of sewing and finishing and all of that. And that's how it came about. And I had to maintain the name because it is the etos of the brand for me, you know. So branding is quite important. People will buy into that quality regardless of what you think is a name or a thing. So branding is important. So these things went out. They had the labels on them. They were well finished. The packaging was fantastic as well. And that's it. That's basically it. And you market it as so. So yes, maybe some tailor behind your house is going to make a dress for you for 2,000 naira. Maybe. But when you put in all of the cost of the packaging and the expectation, you meet the expectation of the customers. If you tell them that it's 20,000 naira, I bet you they'll pay for it. So branding is important. When they tear up that packaging, please let them meet what you say that you are going to deliver. It is extremely important. We have done business for the past seven years. I kid you not. I do not know. I do not know 80% of these people that we sell clothes to. And we do sell clothes, I promise you. This is not a perspire to perspire story. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. So, um, the next thing is that create an online presence. I think I kind of talked about that already now, that create an online presence. If you, if somebody, if you met somebody today now, like, um, you say, uh, Mr. Paul now, if you met somebody, Mr. Paul today now, the first thing that we're going to do is to start to punch his name, you know, onto some platform, onto some app. Am I right or wrong? So you have to create an online presence. That is where we are. There's nothing we can do about it. And look at where we are today now. Before, it was easy for people to jump on planes, jump in their cars, and just go to wherever they want to go to. But we have to start, you know, thinking about the cost that that is impacting on all of us now. So we're really going to go back to that online space where we have avoided for the longest time. And this is where the world is at now. So you have to create an online presence. Um, make sure that, you know, you develop whatever... Um, Develop whatever space that is relevant to your business because not all of the um, social media platforms would be relevant to your business. If, for instance, um, fashion is very great on Instagram and TikTok and there's threads now, everybody's loving it, even Twitter, because fashion is a visual um, business. So there's no way that you can sell fashion without visuals. So you have to perfect that area. Sorry. Um, another angle for me for it being a successful um, fashion entrepreneur is to use the products, right? People, like I said, fashion is visual. People will buy into what they see. And if you are the owner or you are associated with a brand and you are not seen to be using it, how easy is it for, us to, for you to convince you know, other people to wear your stuff? I mean, from head to toe, I am dressed in unknown, simple as it is. But this is made in Nigeria. Every time people tell me that, they can't believe that these things were made here. But honestly, they're made here. So we've gotten to that point. And our tailors and our designers, they are so, so brilliant. Like, just put your sketch together, give them fabric, they're at it. So there's no shame in these things, honestly. So wear your, wear your brand, wear your designs. You're a billboard, you're a walking billboard. Everywhere you go, people might not be able to approach you and say, oh, you look nice, but they will give you a second glance. And when you get that second glance, be sure that it's good. I, I, I tell you, it's good. So that's, 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 for, that's, another angle to, that's another angle to marketing yourself. Uh, I talked about consistency earlier. Consistency is key. You know, 
Some days there will be no results, like I said. Other days there will be results, but just keep at it. There's no, there's no elevator to this thing to get into the top. You have to walk the stairs, unfortunately. And like Mr. Paul said, even if you're given 100 million naira, if you do not know how to use it, sorry, you're just going to blow it. You're going to blow it doing the wrong things. Maybe hire everything fancy, and you can't manage it. So consistency is key. Keep at it every day. Do not, um, do not be deceived by the glam that you see up front, social media, everyone. Everybody has their different stories. And believe me, all of the people who have become successful, they have actually put in the work. Trust me, they've put in the work. So don't be in a hurry. Take your time, learn, and you know, continue to grow. Um, this is the part I like, because I like to call myself a fashion entrepreneur. It's the numbers. You cannot sue for one person and be successful. It's not working. It's not going to work. So it's in the numbers. There was, um, there was a fair that we went to, I think it was in 2018. We made so much buzz about it that we sold a particular product, 160 pieces of a particular product in a day. I mean, it's small, but Think about it. If I said the thing was one thousand, was one ten thousand naira, and we sold a hundred and sixty pieces of that particular product, I'm not talking about other things. One sixty pieces. That is the numbers. Then you are in business. When you make the, when you make things, repeat it. You have to write it down. I used um, two yarns of thread to make this shirt. I used two yards of fabric to make this shirt. I used five buttons to make this shirt. The, the, the fabric was completely cotton. It was 100% cotton. The, the finishing was this way. Write it down. You're a small business, so write it down. You have, you have that time. Write it down. Put it together. What did I do? How did I do it? How did people perceive it? So if you do it this way, if you do it again, you, you most probably will succeed at it. So the numbers is not in making one or two shirts for people and then going off and just blowing that money. No, put it back. I started my business with 25K. I'm not even joking. I was rock bottom broke. I'd been out of work. I went away and I was embarrassed with myself. Like, I'd been working. What do I do with myself? So I had to hide under the covers, try it out wrote it down, repeated, repeated, repeated. I have never had any funding for my business. I'm not going to lie to you guys, never. No funding. Now I'm looking for funding. I'm ready to scale. So, but you know, it happens. So the numbers is where it happens. Don't do it today, fold your arms and go and chill for one week because you've made 100K today. 100K is not, it's not a lot of money anymore. You know, even one million is not a lot of money anymore. So work at the numbers. Don't be afraid. If you've done the basic, you've done the foundation of making sure that everything is right, everything is good, you're putting out your best work, you most certainly would. People would, people would come up for you. So um, in Nigeria, our culture is you know mutual respect it is um concern that is how we were originally built that that is our culture that is what we know we're not westerns who don't care about each other oh hi and go we want to know our children's names we want to know each other's birthdays oh somebody's father died you want to be there for that person so don't regard yourself as just this person's tailor or this person's um, designer. It is very important. Start this from your suppliers to your influencers. It is very important. If you build relationships so good, I'm telling you, you would do things that will make it seem like you're a billionaire and you're not. It's because you've kept good relationship. If you know your supplier's name, maybe it's a man, you know his wife, 
Ah, madam, how are you today? You are really warm, genuinely warm. You ask about his family. If you go to him and you want a credit line, he will give it to you. If you go to your influencer who is charging a million naira for a post, if you have a good relationship, I be believe me, you will get posted for free. So relationship is key. Um, you have to keep you know, a warm and intimate relationship. I know your business will grow in such a way that you, know, you can't keep up with everybody. But genuinely interact and keep, just curate and just nurture those relationships for those times, those important times. It, can, it will not be every day. But those times are important because it will come in handy because most of the time, money will not be necessary for some things, most of the things that you need for your business. So that is that. Continue to grow yourself, continue to do research. There's a lot of resources, like I said, and because of the nature of fashion, it's, it's changing. There's something called um, fashion, um, um, oh, oh Lord, I can't remember now. I can't remember now. I can't remember the name. But there's, you know, projections into the future, what to expect. I can't remember the, the name for it in, in right now. But you need to look into those things. Those things are important for following trends and delivering on what, you know, people want. Uh, fashion also is one of those um, areas that has been there for years, it will be there for years to come. So you have to continue to innovate. I am certain this shirt I'm wearing today is available in like 100 forms, right? Because there are 101 million people who have created the same thing. But you have to continue to innovate in such a way that it becomes peculiar to you. It becomes unique to you. You have to find something. So because, and we're so many people, and the space is large enough for all of us, you know, so this is, this is important to your business. Create that, create that um, niche and, you know, just hone on what it is that you do. Don't, don't, you, you would know where you, you would know about your competition, but they're not the first priority for you as a fashion entrepreneur because these things are there. I mean, if we, even if, it, if it's not available this year, trust me, it's coming back next year. So create your own, you know, designs and unique way. And for me, the last part of growing your business or succeeding at your business is also um, doing good. By doing good, I mean, you know, giving back. Not necessarily, you know, the charitable way. That's one part of it. But employing people who are really, you know, good at what they do. They are creative people who are actually good. You're not going to jump on the next best, you know, tailor because that person is been known already. Bring people up. Train people. People will go. People will come and go. There's nothing you can do about that. But if you keep a good relationship with these people that you work with, you're doing good. You're feeding tons of families that you don't even know of, you know. And the ripple effect comes back to you. So don't don't think that this person is a fresher. I, I don't have that time. You started somewhere as well. So it's important to take people along with you. Do put put, put out that good there and be sure that it will come back to you. So I, this is the end of my nuggets, my um, cocktail of how, what I did, and I hope that it helps somebody. All right. Thank you.